so there's two there's two main two main facets that I want to touch on in this experience. And one is the practicality, the physicality of of well-being of having a body. And two is like the energetic, the consciousness, the metaphysical, the formless aspects of of well-being. And they're both they're both essential. And the real truth is is that actually the physical aspects of our of our body and of our experience are just manifestations of that formless, that conscious, that energetic resonance of our relationship with ourself and with our world. So that's actually where the real power is. Now, of course, when I say that, that's from my perspective. Um, not everyone would necessarily agree with me, uh, especially, say, you know, maybe scientists that say, well, you know, this is what causes cancer and you know this is what causes diabetes and this is what causes that i'm not necessarily arguing with those things because you know it could be potentially proven as true but what i'm also saying is is that none of those things ever even have to manifest none of that has to ever exist at all the conditions don't ever have to be so that something like that exists something like that manifests that's very that's also true so what I'm here to do, what I'm here to do is not to not to tell you the things that you've heard or that you even know are untrue what I'm here to tell you is, is that there are truths that most people do not know most people do not know and they definitely are not experiencing that are also true So before before I go into my my whole thing, since there's only you three here right now. Oh you can come up here. <laughs> I'm not too far behind. I would like for you to. Me too. I really would. I promise I don't bite. I trust. At least not in the daytime. <laughs> That's better. I feel better now. Front row is dangerous. <laughs> Observation is very powerful, but potentially experience, engagement is even more powerful. So, as I said before I go into my whole thing, uh, what's really important is, is that I'm, I mean, right now I'm here for you. That's the only reason, that's the reason why I'm here. So, why are you here? You don't have to answer. You don't have to answer, I'm just asking. And if you tell me, I can potentially, I can potentially give that to you, because that's what I'm here. It's, I'm here in service. So if you can, if you can clarify with inside of yourself why it is that you're here, I can easily bring forth a channel, bring forth knowledge, wisdom, experience, insight, consciousness that is specifically for what it is you want. If you're not clear, if you're not clear, it's actually very hard to really receive what it is you really want without that clarity. So it's actually also in your benefit to just sort of ask yourself, well, why am I, why am I really here? What do I really want? If you could get anything out of this experience, what would that be? I mean, you don't have to answer, but if you just want to decide for yourself, do that. And if you want to tell me, that would be great. I'm just giving you that opportunity to engage, to really, to really participate in this experience versus me just talk to you, versus me just give you words that I feel are the greatest words that have ever come forth, you know, through a, through a being on this earth. I can't even remember what this is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. I uh, know I'm serious because I looked at it yesterday and said I want this, this, and this, but I can't remember which except that I wanted to be here. 
in well, this class? Well, this one is technically uh, supposed to be about health. Yeah. And it's Six. called it's called Know Thyself. Right. right. Six ways. Yes. Right. Yeah. I'm here because I'm a cancer survivor. And so over the years, that's been an experience of mine. I've recognized that there are definite ways of healing ourselves. And so to kind of heal all of that emotional plus physical crap, I don't know what else to call it, so it's been awesome. And I'm always looking for wisdom that I may have missed along the way. Yeah. Yeah, what she say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew there was a reason I invited you up here. It is getting better already. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start out with just the physicality and the practicality because most people's minds have been conditioned to think to think externally, to, to think practicality. Okay, if I eat this, this is bad. If I eat this, this is good. If I eat too much of this, this is bad. If I eat too much of this, it's, it's not really bad, but it's okay. You know, counting calories, you know, all that stuff, all that stuff. I got to work out this much if I'm going to eat this much. Okay. All those external realities, all those external realities. So, the six, the six, the six little tricks. Right. I'm just going to give you. I'm going to give you some very practical, very practical advice. And again, this is this is just from my own experience, and this is a really important part of what I have to offer. Is that even scientists? It's just their personal experience. It doesn't matter how much proof they have. It's just their personal experience. All science is relative. That's already been proven. Quantum mm -hmm. physics has already proven that an experiment that is done is dictated in part by the observer. The observer is affecting that reality. So let's say I'm a scientist and I work for a pharmaceutical company. Okay, there's an agenda there. I can find certain data if I look for just that data. And I can ignore certain data if I purposefully ignore that data. And I can put together a paper, a scientific paper that has facts, that has research, that has science, that has proof. It doesn't mean it's the full truth. It doesn't mean it's the full spectrum. It's actually purposefully manipulated truth. Right? So is that even truth? Okay? So here's the thing. It's like if you go walk you go walk around out there, you're going to see all these people with their like supplements and all this stuff. They don't actually really care about your health. They're doing it because they're trying to make money. It's a job. That's the real truth. That's their number one. That's their number one goal. If they didn't get paid, they wouldn't do it. They're not volunteering. They're not doing it for you. those companies that develop those supplements they're doing it for one reason and that's to make money all right the real truth is so here's one of the secrets okay is that all the nutrition that you need is in real food real food I'm not talking about the stuff at the grocery store it's not real food if you buy your food at a grocery store if you buy your food you know like this thing right here this has no nutrition value whatsoever. It's just calories. That's all it is. Now, my body is a very evolved mechanism, so it can actually create nutrition out of empty calories. But it's a lot more work for my body to do that. My body has to do all the work. My body has to do all the alchemy. <clears throat> Whereas if I were eating the fresh vine-ripe tomatoes off of my tomato plant in my sustainable garden, Right, or my melons, or you know, the <coughs> wide variety of food that I have available there, my body doesn't have to do any work whatsoever. It's pure nutrition. Pure nutrition, and when it's raw, for the most part, it digests itself. It doesn't even require your body to create enzymes. So not only is this right here void of nutrition, but it also has no enzymes in it. This is all cooked, processed food. So my body has to create the enzymes to break this food down as well. So in truth, 
I would actually probably be better off eating no food at all for days than to eat stuff like this. It's even harder on my body to eat stuff like this than it is to eat nothing. Now what's really cool about what I have to say is that I don't talk about theories. I don't talk about what ifs or possibilities. I talk about experience that I've actually had. All right, so health has been a passion of mine for 13 years. I've dedic I dedicated my life to health 13 years ago because I was sick, because I was unhealthy, because I was unhappy. My whole life sucked, really, actually. And so when I when I got healthy, I was like, oh. Priceless. It's truly priceless. Every facet of my life is better when I when I feel healthy and when I am healthy than when I'm not. Everything. The way I sleep. I sleep deeper. I sleep more relaxed. I enjoy it more. Everything. The way I walk. Everything. The simple things. Not to mention all of the extreme and amazing and awesome things that I can do and that I've done. You know, I've done hardcore camping trips in the middle of Alaska for weeks, you know, hundreds of miles from any sort of person, cabin, city, anything. Completely out there, no nothing. <clears throat> Completely out there, in the wild, in the wilderness. All right, there's a lot of risk, a lot of danger, and if you don't have a really capable body, it's even more risky, it's even more dangerous. And I couldn't do those types of things if I wasn't extremely healthy. You know, I can climb any tree, you know, that I want, except for ones that, you know, have a have a trunk that's so big I can't get my arms around it, and there's no branches, and the bark's not big enough for me to get my fingers in there. But if there's bark to get my fingers in there, I can put my fingers in there, and I can climb up that thing. I can go for days and days and days without food. Days without food. You know, not only am I fine, you know, I even sleep less. You know, because my body's not processing food. I do still eat food. I don't believe that I necessarily have to, but for whatever reason, I still feel like I need it. Now, it is true that there is actually people that exist on this earth that don't eat food. And it's really important that you realize that's a reality. And if you look it up online, you just type in HR, HRN, sun gazing, and there's a man, he lives in India, and if you like science, um, you know, he's been claiming that he doesn't eat food for a long time now. And so multiple scientific organizations around the world have taken him into their labs and they've put him in controlled situations for over 200 days. No food. Even, even American scientists have, have said that it's true. Does he drink? Does he drink? He drinks water. That's all with water? Yeah, he drinks water and he does sun gazing, which means he watches the sun as it rises for an hour and he watches as it sets, as it sets for an hour. There's an hour when the sun rises and there's an hour when the sun sets. When the, when the UV rays aren't too, too strong, uh, you, you, you watch the sun. And it's more than just watching it, it's connecting with that sun. Right? It, there's a very spiritual reality there that, that's going on. I'm not necessarily saying you should do it. I'm just saying that it's important to be aware, right? That anything actually is possible. It really is. And everything is in alignment. Everything's in alignment. So I'm not here to say, oh, you know, you're 10 pounds overweight, you're 30 pounds overweight, you're whatever, you know, you're ugly, you're bad, you know, you should change your diet, blah, blah, blah. I'm here for you, right? And that's why I ask you, what do you want? How healthy do you want to be? Do you even care? Because that's, that's all it really comes down to. Mm -hmm.